to the same teacher, no? Uh, in this moment, teacher arrived. <laughs> Okay. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. It's G. <laughs> welcome, teacher. Welcome to, welcome to you, too. Thank you. How are you feeling today? It's great. Good. <laughs> we are going to start in a couple of minutes, I guess, because I don't know. If we are complete right now, so let me check. We have 10 participants, I mean nine, but we are, uh, are going to wait a little longer for the others. And we are going to start because you know that today is the beginning of this course. So we are going to uh, wait a moment for the others to come to the meeting. And we are going to talk about the specification of the course and we are going to see what are the things that we are going to learn uh, through this course. So just wait a moment. Okay. I have a question. Tell me. Okay. Uh, are we going to be using the website of English Corporativo while we are on the class or not? I mean, you are, a, let me check. I don't know. Yeah. Ustedes son inglés eh, preavanzado, ¿verdad? Sí. Yes. You, we are going to work with the platform online. Mi pregunta es que si ahorita estamos solo por la reunión de Zoom, pero si a la vez vamos a estar usando eh, la website de inglés corporativo. No, in this case we are going to have the meeting on Zoom every every night and then we're going to see the topics and then you are going to work on the platform that is the, the platform of English Corporativo. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now we are going to begin with this session. This is the session number one of this a new course that you are going to have. Um, the first thing that we are going to do is to, maybe you need to, to know what is my name because I am now the in charge of this uh, course. So my name is Elena Chavarria and I am in charge of this uh, month in which we are going to learn a lot of things. And I know that this course is this course we are going to practice a lot speaking because in this case we are going to produce um, the things that we are learning. So in this case we are going to have like more uh, practices uh, of the English language. So uh, there is a thing that I'd like to share with you the first day that we are uh, beginning with this course is that I like to work in um, documents online. In this case, I am using Google Docs in which I'm going to uh, develop all the information that I have for you um, with the different topics that we are going to develop uh, during the, uh, the module. In this case, you're not going to have uh, a Word document in which we are going like, uh, download it for different uh, documents uh, or something like that. In this case, I'm going to um, write all the information on that Google document and you are going to have the link or the access link for that uh, document in which you are going to find all the information that we are going to develop during this month. So at the end of this course, I mean at the end of this session, I will send to you the link of that document in which we were 
or we are going to work during this hour. And when you have time, you can access to the, to the link and you can find the document in which you are going to find all the information. Maybe you cannot uh, be in the meeting one day or something like that. And then you can find all the information there. Um, in some cases, uh, the information is not going to be like, um, it's going to, to have like, uh, it's not going to appear in the document, but I will send the link again, maybe the next week or in two weeks because we need to have all the information uh, in the document. So let me show you the document in which we, were, uh, we are going to work during this month. And then we are going to see an uh, intro video. And then we are going to begin with the information that we are going to develop uh, tonight. So I have this document here, this one. And I will send to you this link of this document. In this case, we have just one phrase here and the name of the topic that we are going to develop today. But uh, we are going to construct in this document at the end of the course, at the end of the month, we are going to have like 16 pages or something like that, because we are going to have exercises, we are going to have examples, we are going to have um, more information and all of those things. So in that case, we are going to see a lot of information and we are going to construct new information because I like to uh, find uh, information for you not just the information that we have on the platform, because I know that uh, there are some exercises and there are some uh, conversation and a lot of that things, but I like to share with you new information uh, to make it clear the things that we are learning. So we have this phrase here and uh, the beginning of the week for the next uh, three weeks too, I will share a phrase like this with you because I like to make this kind of motivational things with uh, the people that are learning English or something like that. So we're going to have four different uh, phrases during uh, the course. So this phrase says, yesterday is but a dream and tomorrow is only a vision, but today we'll, we'll leave and make every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. So in this case, we are talking about that we cannot like waste our time thinking about the past or uh, worrying about the things that we are going to do in the future, but we need to live our lives today in the present. And if we know how to live our lives in this precise moment, we are going to see uh, our past or the yesterday actions as a dream of happiness and we know that in some cases it is not like all the time is something very good and in some cases we uh, have lived something very bad or something that is sad but in this case we are going to see it as a memory and we are not going to worry about the future in this precise moment because we are not going to live, we are not going to enjoy our uh, life in this moment. But if we are doing uh, good things with our present, we are going to have a vision of hope for tomorrow. So the uh, topic that we are going to see today is describing problems. But first, I have a video for you. So I will stop this one and I will share the uh, video that we are going to see that is a uh, introductory video of a uh, Centro de Formación uh, related to the work that uh, performs in support. So we're going to see the following video. So let me stop this one. El INSAFOR ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. 
nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más, en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del sistema de formación profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el Trabajo. Contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos. Tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online. Cursos online, con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insaport ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país. Es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas, porque en Insaport trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Con el objetivo de formar en igualdad el Instituto Salvadoreño de Formación Profesional INSAFOR, presentó en el año 2017 la Guía para la Prevención y Erradicación de la Discriminación contra las Mujeres en los Centros de Formación Fijos, donde se desarrollan programas permanentes de formación profesional del INSAFOR, cuya elaboración contó con el apoyo de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, OIT, y su objetivo a largo plazo es contribuir a mejorar las condiciones y oportunidades de acceso y permanencia de las mujeres en los procesos de formación profesional sin discriminación de ningún tipo. La guía pretende poner a disposición de Insafor y de sus centros colaboradores un instrumento que les permita identificar, conocer, prevenir, atender y erradicar progresivamente cualquier discriminación por razones de género contra las mujeres. Posteriormente, el Instafor desarrolló un plan piloto de implementación de la guía en tres centros de formación fijos y es así como surgen cuatro instrumentos fundamentales para la aplicabilidad de la guía, siendo estos manual de convivencia, protocolo de atención en casos de bullying y acoso sexual, lineamientos para la comunicación de los programas de formación con lenguaje inclusivo no sexista y la guía metodológica para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres. Dichos documentos fueron elaborados con el enfoque de derechos humanos y de género, estableciendo medidas que garanticen relaciones de respeto, igualdad y equidad entre todas las personas que forman parte y conviven en los centros de formación profesional. De esta forma el INSAFOR asume la igualdad de género como un principio transversal de trabajo, entregando a los centros de formación estas cuatro herramientas que complementan la guía para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres, a fin de que sean puestas en práctica en beneficio de las usuarias de la formación profesional. INSAFOR, formando en igualdad. Okay, that was the video that we uh, were supposed to see at the beginning of this uh, session. So that is the information that Insafor has for you. So now we are going to start with the uh, topic and uh, the things that are um, that we are going to develop during uh, this uh, day. 
or in this case, it is nine. So we are going to listen a conversation that is in our intro video. And you can find this video on the platform. That is the first video that we are going to see. And in this case, this is a conversation and we are going to try to get the whole information that we are going to develop. The thing is that we are going to see first the video, we are going to listen at the conversation, and then we are going to specify what are the elements that we need from that video. And in this case, uh, you need to uh, pay attention to the things that the people is saying in the, in the video. And then we are going to explain the, the topic because you know that in this case, we are going to talk about describing problems. Um, and we are going to see in which uh, ways we can describe problems. And also we are going to use those uh, like uh, structures to construct our information and our sentences in which we can explain the different problems that we can find in different places. But in this case, we're going like uh, to see this conversation in a, we can call it in a hotel or something like this, but we're going to see the following intro video and if you can or if you want to listen again um, that conversation you can do it on the platform because it is the first uh, video that we are going to find there so in that case that you need to listen again or practice the conversation you can do it on the platform so let's hear this next video or this conversation, and then we are going to start with the explanation. So let's see. Welcome, new course, new challenges. This is what we will do. We want you to watch a video. We we'll call it an intro video. Everything to be learned in this section is practiced in it. We want you to watch it now and watch it at the end of the section and you will see you will understand it better. Enjoy! Norman, I've got to go to the hardware store. Room 12 really needs work. Room 12, yeah. We're expecting guests soon, so take care of them, okay? Yes. Thanks. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. Anybody there? Sorry. Hi. May I help you? Yes, we have reservations, Quincy, Ed, and Michelle, for two nights. Yes, Mr. Quincy, uh, you're in room 12. May I help you with your luggage? Oh, no, we're okay. We, we're just staying two nights. We don't have a lot of luggage. All right, well, I'll show you the way to your room. Follow me. Oh, watch that floorboard. It's loose. Be careful. Here's the temperature control. Press this button for air conditioning. This button to turn on the heat. Adjust the temperature with this dial. Bathroom's right in there. My name is Norman. Give me a call if you need anything. He was strange. He just got here and I'm already feeling stressed out. Hey, does it feel cold in here to you? Yeah. Hey, look. It's stuck. I'm gonna turn on the heat. This thing's broken. I'll call the front desk. Norman, we have a window that needs to be fixed and the heat needs to be checked too. Okay, thanks. 
He's on his way. That was nice of him. I still think he's strange. That was quick. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's the problem? Oh, it's it's cold. Turn up the heat. The heat doesn't work. Well, what's wrong with it? The dial's broken. It came off in my hand. Well, that should do it. We'll see. That window needs fixing, too. It's stuck, and it's letting the cold air in. At least it's warming up. Yeah, but look around. The paint is cracked and peeling. The nightstand is scratched. The curtains are torn. And the rug is worn and dirty. Actually, this place is a dump. You know what? It's getting really warm in here. Norman didn't fix anything. He just turned the temperature way up, and now it's stuck on high. I can't turn the heat off. Well, open the window. I'm on it. Ed? There's no water in here. Ugh, and I can't open this window. That does it. We're leaving. Something the matter? Everything's the matter. First of all, the thermostat is broken. It's too hot now. And the window is stuck, and there's no water. Everything needs to be fixed. Tell me he's not strange. Strange? He's out of his mind. Okay, that is the, the intro video for this uh, first topic that we are going to develop. If if you can hear the conversation and if you can see the things that are happening in that place, you can find that they are having like a lot of troubles with their room. They find a lot of things that is that are not working and they use um some expressions uh, related to the things that are not working on that room so the thing is that we are going to begin talking about uh, that things and also we are going to uh, learn how to create that kind of sentence like the ones that they were using in that conversation when they are talking like Oh, the heat is broken, or the uh, curtains are torn, or something like this. So, in this case, we are going to begin with the first part. And uh, if you want, as I said before, if you want to hear again the conversation, if you want to like uh, listen again the words that they are using. Or something like this, you can uh, find it on uh, the platform and you can uh, watch that video uh, the times that you want. So in this case, we're going to begin with this part. That is the, the, the part number one that we're going to see right now. And the first thing is that we are going to make a definition of problem. In this case, uh, we're not just talking about something um, that is related to our work or our daily life in it, we're going to make it like something very, very general. 
to begin with this part. And then we are going to see what are the structures that we can use to talk about this kind of problems. So the first thing that we are going to see is what is a problem? So this is the question, what is a problem? And in this case, I have a short definition for you in which we're going to see what is um, this kind of problem because we are not talking about mass or something like this. We are talking about a daily life and action that we perform in, in every moment in our lives. So in this case, it's that. The definition of a problem is something that has to be solved or an unpleasant or undesirable condition that needs to be corrected. So in this case, we are talking about something that has to be solved. And that is the thing. We are going to talk about the problems and we are going to express, we are going to learn how to express those problems or those situations that we are seeing they are not working. And also we are going to talk about the situation or how to fix those problems. Because in this case, we're just not uh, talking about the, the problem itself. We are going to talk about how to solve those problems or the idea that we have uh, on how to solve those problems. So in this case is the problem and the solution of that problem. So we have here, So that is the definition. And in this case, we have uh, two different ways to describe this problem. In this case, we're going to use two different um, structures to talk about those problems. So in this case, we have the number one that is using the, the past participle, but in this case, using this past participle as an adjective. And the second one are the nouns, using a noun to describe the problem or the things that we see that are not working in that situation. So two different ways to describe problems. We have the number one that is using past participle as an adjective. And the number two, nouns. So in this case, um, we are going to use these two different uh, structures. But in this case, um, when we are using that structure or those structures, uh, we can say that the meaning is very similar. In this case, it's not like we're going to have another or a different a meaning for the sentence. In this case, it's like when we are using um, the synonyms, because we are using like uh, different words to express the same idea. In this case, it's the, it's the same uh, thing, because we're going to like construct different sentences, but at the end, they have like the same uh, meaning or they are talking about the same situation. But in a different way. So let's see, we're going to see two uh, examples that are talking about the same thing, but they are using different words. And in this case, they are using um, 
these two different ways to describe the same problem. So let's see the example. In this case, we have the example number one, and in this one said, something is torn. Something is torn. So in this case, we are using the past participle and it is um, acting as an adjective. And we can say that in Spanish, this sentence uh, can mean algo se ha roto o algo se ha desgarrado. Something is torn. Algo está roto, algo está desgastado, desgarrado. And that is the, the first sentence and there is the first way in which we can express uh, something that has a problem. And the second example is, in this case, we are going to use it like this. It has a tear in it. Has a tear in it. In this case, we're saying almost the same thing. Tiene un desgarro. Tiene una parte rota. We can say it like that. In, in that case, if you can uh, like analyze the two sentences, we're saying the same thing. So in this case, it's just uh, like a different structure or using different words, but they are expressing the same idea. Then we're going to see the structures that we are going to use to create this kind of sentence. We are going to see the structure for these sentences using past participle as an adjective. And then we are going to see also um, the structure that we can use for the sentence using nouns. And in the sentence using nouns, we're going to have two different kind of sentence that we can create. So let's see the structures. For the first one that is the past participle, we have the subject plus B plus past participle. We have subject plus B plus the past participle. So it's a very, very simple structure in this case because we are not going to have like very long sentences. So the example, my dress is torn. My dress, that is the subject, plus is torn. So in this case, we are using the verb to be the correspondent to the person that we are using for the sentence. In this case, we are using the third person and we are using the, um, the subject. In this case, it's, it's like we are using it. That is the, the subject that we are using. It is torn or my dress is torn. In that case, we have the first sentence. Then for the structure of the second way, that in this case is nouns. Remember that I was saying that we have two different uh, sentences that we can use in this or two different structures that we can use in this part. And the first one is subject plus have plus noun. And the other one is there is or there are plus noun. And we have the examples. My dress has a stain on it. My dress has a stain on it. And there is the second one. There is a stain on it. 
So there we have the examples and there we have the structure that we can use to express different problems that we can find, uh, like uh, the people on the conversation and that they find a lot of problems on the room that they have. So in this case, we can use these three different structures to explain and to express uh, problems that we can find on uh, different uh, situations in our daily life. In this case, we can use it for uh, our jobs, for the family, for a vacation or something like this. So we have the, sub, the first structure that is using the past participle. In this case, you are going to use it in past. But remember that in this case, you are using it as an adjective. It is not like the main verb of the sentence. In this case, it's the adjective or it's functioning as the adjective because they are um, describing the, the subject or the thing that you are talking about. Then the other two, um, they are using nouns. In this case, you're not going to use it in past. And you are using there is and there are, depending if the word is singular or plural. And you have this simple sentence. My dress has a stain on it or there is a stain on it. And in this case, you are referring to the same thing. You are talking about the dress, but using a different sentence. So those are the structures that you can use for this topic. And there are no like very, very long uh, topic or very long information about this topic because there is not like kind of complicated. It's kind of uh, easy. So we're going to see more examples uh, using uh, those structures. We are going to see the examples with past participle and examples with nouns. And in this case, you can see uh, the different uh, sentence that we can create with these structures. So let's see more examples. And we have a short list, but I need to put past participle. And we have the first sentence or the first example, and it says, the jacket lining is torn. The tabletop is damaged. The device is chipped. My pants are stained. Her sunglasses are a little scratched. So if you can notice in these examples, uh, and that's why we are using uh, the past, um, the past participle as an adjective because we are referring to the subject. And in this case, the subject is like a thing. In this case, we have the jacket, we have the tabletop, we have the base, we have the pants, and we have the sunglasses. And we are giving more information about that specific thing. And that's why we are using it as an adjective because in that case, we are not talking about the action itself. In this case, we are describing the part of that. Um, maybe clothes, maybe some things that we have in our houses. So in that case, we are like explaining or giving more details and more information about the things that we are using. Oh, for example, like in the last example, the last sentence, her sunglasses are a little scratched. We are talking about the glasses that that person is using. So we are 
uh, giving more information about the glasses and the condition that those uh, glasses are and something like this. Now, we are going to see the examples with nouns. And in this case, we have, it, it has a tear in it. It has a tear in it. Or we can say, there is a hole in it. Then we have, there is some damage on the top. There is a tip in it. They have a stain of them. There are a few scratches on them. And it has a leak in it. So in that case, we have a very simple sentence in which we are talking about in the condition of the things that we are explaining. And that's uh, the way in which we can create uh, this uh, sentence using the past participle and the noun. Now we're going to see another uh, conversation in another video, but in this case, um, in this conversation, you are going to have uh, the first part, uh, you can read the conversation uh, while listening but the second part you are going just to listen the conversation you are just going to listen uh, the things that are happening in that uh, conversation so let me uh, stop uh, this uh, part and i'm going to search for the another video and the other conversation that we are going to uh, listen to continue with this topic of the the solving problems or talking about problems. So let me get the video because you need to listen that a conversation. So give me a moment because it's working. The conversation it's called it keep bar it keeps burning. So let's see what is this conversation about. Has it ever happened? And in this case, we're going to listen twice because we're going to have two different conversations. So we're going to listen in twice. So now let's see. Hello, has it ever happened to you that everything goes wrong? Sometimes everything needs to be fixed because everything keeps on breaking. Now listen to the conversation and find out what happened to these people. Don't forget to practice the conversation. Page 38, exercise six, conversation. It keeps burning, part A. Listen and practice. Hello? Hello, Ms. Locke. This is Jack Burr. Uh, Mr. Burr? In apartment 305. Oh, yes. What can I do for you? Does your refrigerator need fixing again? No, it's the oven this time. Oh, so what's wrong with it? Well, I think the temperature control needs to be adjusted. 
The oven keeps burning everything I try to cook. Really? Okay. I'll have someone look at it right away. Thanks a lot, Ms. Locke. Uh, by the way, Mr. Burr, are you sure it's the oven and not your cooking? Listen to another tenant calling Ms. Locke. What's the tenant's problem? Hello? Hello. Is this the manager? Yes. This is Ms. Locke. This is Lula Harris in apartment 216. Yes. How can I help you, Mrs. Harris? I'm having a problem with the electricity. What sort of problem with the electricity? Well, it keeps going off and coming back on again. I see. Is it just the lights, or is it the appliances, too? Let me check. No, the refrigerator is okay, so it must be just the lights. I guess the fuse box needs to be checked. I'll come up and take a look at it right away. Thanks so much. Okay, we're going to listen one more time and then we're going to explain what is happening here. Page 38. Yes, Exercise 6. Conversation. It keeps burning. Part A. Listen and practice. Hello? Hello, Ms. Locke. This is Jack Burr. Uh, Mr. Burr? In apartment 305. Oh, yes. What can I do for you? Does your refrigerator need fixing again? No, it's the oven this time. Oh, so what's wrong with it? Well, I think the temperature control needs to be adjusted. The oven keeps burning everything I try to cook. Really? Okay. I'll have someone look at it right away. Thanks a lot, Ms. Locke. Uh, by the way, Mr. Burr, are you sure it's the oven and not your cooking? Listen to another tenant calling Ms. Locke. What's the tenant's problem? Hello? Hello. Is this the manager? Yes. This is Ms. Locke. This is Lula Harris in apartment 216. Yes. How can I help you, Mrs. Harris? I'm having a problem with the electricity. What sort of problem with the electricity? Well, it keeps going off and coming back on again. I see. Is it just the lights, or is it the appliances, too? Let me check. No, the refrigerator is okay, so it must be just the lights. I guess the fuse box needs to be checked. I'll come up and take a look at it right away. Thanks so much. Okay, let's see. What is the problem with the first conversation? What is the problem that he is having? The first case is the oven. Ah, the, the oven has a problem because it's keep burning the food. And in the second conversation, what is the problem? The light. The light. Electricity. Electricity. Good. The electricity, because she uh, thinks that the electricity is going on and going off, but in that case, it is not uh, related to the appliances because it is just the light. So in this case, what we are talking about uh, this kind of conversation, if you can see in this first conversation, we have um, an special a sentence that we need for the second part that we are a, a expressing or talking about the problems. Let's see what is a, the a sentence that we need to see. In this case is when this a man is using the word need, the word need and the word keep, they are using need and keep. And you know that a, in this case, we can translate it very, very easy, the word need and the word keep. 
but we are going to use need with um we're going to, to use keep and need with gerunds that you know that gerunds are the words that end with ing and also we are going to use need with passive infinitive in context so in this case it is not just to use need and keep but also we are going to learn how to use it with gerunds with words ending in ing and also we are going to use it with a passive, a passive infinitive. So in this case, let's see. In the sentence in this one said, does your refrigerator need fixing? Need fixing. Need is the word that we're using in fixing is the word with the ing. So we are going to see those like a combination of words that we are going to use it to explain the um, the action taken or in this case uh, what needs to be done so we can say that the first part in which we were seeing the structures is the problem talking about the problem and in this case need and keep with uh gerund or um with a pass, uh, uh, passive infinitive is the solution how to solve the problem so in this case, we have the problem and how to solve it. Then we have another sentence. Mm, this one, I think the temperature control needs to be adjusted. The oven keeps burning everything I try to cook. So those uh, sentences uh, are the things that we're going to see in this part. So let me put the document and we're going to begin with that explanation about the use of gerund and the use of passive infinitive. Let's see. So here. Here, here, here. Okay, in this case, we are talking about a, the objective that we can find on the platform is that you participants will listen to a conversation about problems and we are going to see keep and need with gerunds and need with positive uh, infinitive in context. So in this case, we are going to focus on a action taken and that is the thing that we are going to do action taken or we can call it what needs to be done what needs to be done. Because we are going not just to have a problem, we are going to talk about how to solve those, that all those problems that we have. So in this case, we are just going to see the example. That's the first thing that we are going to do. See some examples, and then we're going to have the explanation of those sentences and then but this is for tomorrow we are going to have an exercise in which we are going to talk about a problem and also we are going to give like the solution to that problem so let's see the examples the first is need plus the passive infinitive remember that these ones are just the examples then we're going to give explanation for this one. So we have here, the current needs to be fixed. The chair needs to be repaired. The walls need to be painted. So in this case, we're going to find this kind of sentence in which we're using the passive infinitive uh, to complete this uh, sentence in which we are using need. So in this case, we're just using the word need. The car needs to be fixed, the chair needs to be repaired, and the walls need to be painted. Then, 
We have another one that is need plus gerund. In this case, we are going to see how to use the word need and uh, using also a word or verbs in this case, using the ing form. So let's see. But remember that we also are using keep, but in this case, we have just the examples with a need. So let's see the examples. It needs fixing. It needs fixing. The chair needs repairing. And the last one, they need painting. So in this case, we have two different ways in which we can like express the solutions, because in this case, we are talking about the solution that we can give to the problems that are in the first part. Because we are going to use that uh, uh, those structures with the past and with the nouns uh, to talk about the problem. And these ones we are going to use it for uh, explaining how to solve that problem that we are explaining in the first uh, part. But for the exercise that we are going to develop uh, tomorrow, because we have just like a couple of minutes. We're going to use different words. I'm going to write here the words that you can use to express the problem. And you can have like an idea of the sentence that you are going to use for that, um, for that exercise. So I'm going to write a list of words that you can use to express some problems. Uh, and then you are going to use uh, need and keep or something like this to explain the solution for that problem. So let's see, words that we're going to use for the exercise. And in this case, we have the two options also. You can use the past participle or you can use just the nouns. That is the thing. You can use whatever you want. And we have break, tip, dance, A scratch, a leak, tear, pain, and a crack. So those are the words that you are going to use for the exercise. And I'm going to send this link to you because you need to, to have this information on ready. So we are going to start, uh, I mean, we are going to uh, end this session here and we're going to see each other tomorrow in session number two. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good